they come across some interesting creatures on planet Earth when they get here, and uh, and they say, okay, well, we need to we need to get help. We need to get a low, much more gold out of the ground than we're getting right now, because based on what the Sumerian tablets and the translations thereof tell us, there was only a small number of these these Anunnaki that arrived on planet Earth. And it wasn't enough to get the gold out of the ground. I guess what I'm trying, what, but, I'm, what I'm confused about is, uh, were there two different beings? Were there two different races, or was it all the same species that came here? Well, in the beginning, I guess it was it was one species. The Anunnaki would be one species, and uh, and this is still the big the big question. You know, where did the different race groups from planet Earth come from? And that question hasn't been answered. It's something that we need to deal with. It's a very important problem that we need to get on top of. How do the different race groups fit and you know suddenly come out of this 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 uh, this picture? So it seems that there was a lot more cloning and manipulation that happened, you know. And this whole story that you know white people are white because they live further away from the equator, and black people are black because they live more in the sun. I mean, that that's just rubbish, you know. It's just it doesn't it, wash with me. You know? It doesn't make very no, much sense. Now, sense. throughout history, though, we've had things like the Minotaur and a lot of these. Uh, I mean, even Bigfoot. You've got all these anomalies everywhere. Were these remnants of their genetically of uh, their genetic manipulation? Um, you know, half reptiles, half human type entities, etc. All their experiments. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. You know, I'm not sure how far your your audience goes, but uh, it's important to to tap into every bit of information uh, when you do research. And I believe that you, as, as a researcher and a scientist in, in a world that we live in today, you've got to be open to everything, every area and every possible bit of information you get. What, what fascinates me on this planet is the diverse, many different races we have here. Is it because of environment and locale or... Are these all, I've always thought about this. Uh, the more we look at, at the different race groups on planet Earth, you know, we call ourselves the human race, but we're not one race. We're distinctly several different race groups. And uh, that becomes very interesting and often a very sensitive subject, but something that needs to be discussed openly without, you know, um, racial prejudice and, uh, and so forth. So it becomes more and more compelling um, the evidence is, becomes overwhelming that we are, we did not really evolve to this point in time. Um, we somehow were manipulated into this, into this point in time. There was, for, for a specific reason, no doubt. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, some evolutionists, Michael, would say, George, don't use the word popped up. We, we evolved, yet it, it, it's pretty convincing that we kind of just showed up all of a sudden, isn't it? cradle of humankind that we that that is being sold to the world doesn't have any human skeletons in it we have hominids in there astropathicus uh, africanus and and uh, the miss mrs place and littlefoot and wonderful examples of over 500 fossils that have been excavated from the stagfontein caves just uh, sort of northwest of johannesburg um over 500 fossils, if, I, if I've got it right, uh, but they all hominids, no human skeletons there. So these are all the so, supposedly um, pre, pre-human um, evolutionary states. They are not human.
has become a very hot political debate in South Africa because some people believe that you've become a racist and you've, you've, you're drawing racial lines, and it's got nothing to do with that. You just, you know, you've got to call it what it is. You've got to call it as you find it. You can't start becoming politically sensitive to one group or another. No, it's, this is anthropology. Are, are these all various sex races from other extraterrestrials that have been here and, you know, they've manipulated in their own image? So the uh, the Asian person, the Caucasian, the African, uh, they are in the image of the extraterrestrial that came to this planet a long time ago. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah, absolutely. And and once again, you you obviously um, give this stuff a great deal of thought. And I think you put your finger right on the button one one more time. Here's another recent discovery that's very interesting. All blue-eyed people can be traced back to one ancestor who lived 10,000 years ago near the Black Sea. Guess what, guys? The white skin, the white people, if you will, are the most recent extraterrestrial DNA to come to the planet. Not the only, because hardly anybody on this planet is indigenous human, according to the traditions that we've encountered. But the most recent ET influx is white-skinned people. Everybody with blue eyes can be traced back to one single ancestor. Now, the Casey reading said that Edgar in his past life in Atlantis was known as Rata, that he was the guy who helped design and build the Great Pyramid with the cooperation of an extraterrestrial group called Ra, and that the reason why he was able to do all these magical things like channeling and being able to find out where to build the pyramid and being able to hear the words was that he was a hybrid. He, his mother was impregnated by a human extraterrestrial that had white skin. They'd never seen white skinned people on Earth before. I was terrified. As soon as the, the, the sun went down, I knew they'd be there. Jane Nelm says throughout her life she's had constant visitors and not of this Earth. She says it all started in 1973 when a brilliant white light appeared in her bedroom window one night. As I pulled the drape aside, all of a sudden there were five beings this tall all around me. She said one of the beings was so tall it could hardly get through the door. Nelm says those beings abducted her neighbor just as they had her before. Why? She says for scientific research. I know this is crazy, but this is what happens. They examined her. She said when she was on the ship, the mother ship, she said there were all kinds of different species of aliens. Some of them were wearing civilian clothes. She said some of them talked in other languages. She said the ones that came over to her and um, told her that they weren't going to harm her. They just wanted to do some examinations. She says she confronted those same aliens that night and even has evidence they were here. These are the fingerprints off of the car. Nelm says these long, skinny markings are the alien's fingerprints that she dusted, and she has pictures as well. This alien was in a fetal position as it tumbled through the window through solid material. Here's his head and his eye socket. And this is one hand here, another hand here. It's almost like an x-ray. Even as a young child, I wasn't really sure what they were. And, and that was a long time ago back then. It, the whole um, alien abduction phenomenon wasn't uh, at all out in the media. So, As a young girl, she wasn't familiar with the term UFO or alien abduction. But in later years, Amy discovered books that described encounters nearly identical to her own. As she grew older, Amy believed she was abducted multiple times and taken inside a craft where she met three different species of extraterrestrial aliens.
Um, according to the notes that I have here, both of you say that you were abducted by aliens. Now, Donna, when you when people hear that, their first reaction is that you're a nut, all right? And I mean, do you want people to know that? I mean, why not just keep it to yourself? Uh, it's oh God, how can you keep something like that forever to yourself? Yeah. There are people out there right now that just think they're losing their minds, and that's why we're going on to tell them that this does happen to normal people, yeah. people that live normal lives, and there, there are people you can contact to talk with, and you don't have to be alone. All right. And do you guys market this? Do you go speak about it or make money from it at all? No. No, no. no we don't. <laughs> Nothing like that. So you're basically no. just doing the program tonight, even though you know you're going to be disparaged and people are going to make fun of you. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, yeah. they are. I mean, we, we all know that. But you hey, everyone. Leah here. How's it going? I thought I'd make a video today and share my alien abduction story with you. They were slender. They had pretty big heads. They had... Um, like the typical alien type eyes, you know, the almond shaped eyes, the uh, the big almond shaped slanted eyes. And uh, they were translucent looking. They were actually, it, look, it looks like they were made out of light. Um, and I'm, I'm with uh, Su Suzanne Hansen, who is the founder and uh, d director of UFO Focus New Zealand, and she's had over 35 years of research in the UFO field. Welcome. Thank you, Alfred. Well, uh, yes, I've had, I've had a lot of experience in the field in New Zealand and um, have worked with a number of veteran UFO researchers here, both in the area of sightings and in contact as well. On this occasion, I was taken on board craft as an eight-year-old child in my summer pyjamas. And um, the regression began with me actually being in a very large white room, white walls with uh, a white, warm, marble-like floor. And uh, there were a whole variety of other children there. So there were some several human children along with myself. But there were also species of greys and, and mixtures of species, what you might call also transgenic children. Uh, we were there to learn to communicate with each other, and uh, this was all done through the mind, not verbally. So on this occasion, we were learning to communicate through playing games with the mind, so we, w we could actually create, and this is quite, uh, quite hard for me to get my head around, but we were actually creating holographic holograms in the air which we would play with as children would play with physical toys so that was that was a very interesting point and um, I remember commenting on the the color of them the how how bright and um, luminescent and complex the shapes were that we were creating the other question was you know what time what kind of a scale are we looking at as far as time is concerned now it is my understanding, again, from what they've shared with me on board that craft, that they have been here since the beginning of the Earth, and that they had a hand in creating humanity. That they too, as it was described to me by them, that they too seek to know God, meaning the creator of all that is, all that was, and all that will be the creator of everything, the very beginning, the source of all things. So they were given a task. It's like saying, it's like saying, um, you know, whatever your job is, when you get up in the morning and you go to work, that's what your job is. That's what you know that you do. Well, when we are here on earth, it is no different than for them than to say that this is what they do. They are the caretakers of the earth. 